Oh yeah, I haven't done a Backtracks yet this month. Let's see, it's not too far into the month, is it? Let me see. I'm sure i got lots of time left. Let's see, what's today's day? March 28th? March is almost over? What the fuck? Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, I think we can all agree that this has been one of the absolute craziest months in recorded history. Uh, so I think I could probably be forgiven for almost uh, letting the month go by without a backtracks. I was plumb forgetting about it. Uh, but hey, there's a couple of days left in the month still, so better late than never, right? So yes, Backtracks is my monthly roundup of notable album anniversaries divisible by five with at least one Spotlight album review. So let's just uh, dip right on in and see which albums are celebrating anniversaries for the month of March 2020. 65 years ago this month saw the release of Les Paul and Mary Ford's album, Les and Mary. Released in a variety of formats, from 12-inch LP down to vintage hardbound multi-disc 78 RPM set, which incidentally is the origin of the term album as it pertains to recorded music, it spent six weeks on the Billboard Albums chart, peaking at number 15. Les Paul's guitar was accompanied by Mary Ford's vocals on 10 out of the album's 16 tracks, which include 12th Street Rag, on the sunny side of the street, and the traditional spiritual Swing Low Sweet Chariot. Also released in March of 1955 was Mahalia Jackson's Columbia Records debut album, The World's Greatest Gospel Singer. Produced by George Avakian and arranged by Mitch Miller, the album was recorded in two consecutive evening sessions in New York City. The album includes I Will Move On Up A Little Higher, Walk Over God's Heaven, and traditionals such as When I Wake Up In Glory, Keep Your Hand On The Plow, and When The Saints Go Marching In. Happy 60th anniversary this month to the Nat King Cole album, Tell Me All About Yourself. It was produced by Lee Gillette and arranged by Dave Cavanaugh and reached number 33 on the Billboard Albums chart. It includes the Irving Berlin song, The Best Thing For You Would Be Me, the Matt Gordon and Harry Warren tune, This Is Always, and the Sammy Kahn compositions, Until The Real Thing Comes Along and Dedicated To You. Also released in March of 1960 was Good Deal, the third album by The Three Sounds. The trio of Gene Harris on piano, Andrew Simpkins on bass, and Bill Dowdy on drums. In addition to two songs composed by Harris, the Alfred Lyon-produced album includes renditions of Duke Ellington's Satin Doll, the Sonny Rollins tune St. Thomas, and Don't Blame Me, written by Jimmy McHugh and Dorothy Fields. Fifty-five years ago this month, Buck Owens and his Buckaroos released the album I've Got a Tiger by the Tail. It topped the Billboard Country Albums chart and reached number 43 on the Billboard Pop Albums chart. Along with a cover of Chuck Berry's Memphis and the classic cowboy ballad Streets of Laredo, the album includes Owens originals such as Cry in Time, If You Fall Out of Love With Me, and the title track. Also released in March of 1965 was The Beach Boys Today, the Beach Boys' eighth album. It spent almost a year on the Billboard Albums chart, peaking at number four. It featured the top ten singles Dance, Dance, Dance and When I Grow Up to Be a Man, as well as Help Me Rhonda, which in a re-recorded version released as a single later that spring, hit number one on the singles chart. This album saw the band take on more mature themes in their lyrics, as well as adopting a more lush orchestral sound, thanks in part to session musicians The Wrecking Crew, whose members included Billy Strange, Leon Russell, and Glenn Campbell. Half a century ago this month, Joni Mitchell released her third album, Ladies of the Canyon. It peaked at number 27 on the Billboard 200 and was certified platinum. The biggest hit single to come from the album was Big Yellow Taxi, which was a top 10 hit in Australia and a top 20 single in the UK and Mitchell's native Canada, and has been covered by numerous artists including Amy Grant, Moya Brennan, and Counting Crows. Her friendships and artistic partnerships with Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young are prominent throughout this album, as they would cover her song Woodstock on their album Deja Vu the same month, and her album track Willie is a tribute to Graham Nash. Backing vocals on The Sugar Game were sung by the quartet, credited in the liner notes as the Lookout Mountain United Downstairs Choir. Speaking of which, also released in March of 1970 was Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young's album Deja Vu. It was the band's second album overall, but their first as a quartet with Neil Young. It peaked at number 5 on the UK Albums Chart, and number 1 in the US, Canada, and Australia. It went gold in the US two weeks after release, eventually being certified seven times platinum. It currently ranks as the highest selling album of each member's career. The first two singles, Woodstock and Teach Your Children, were top 20 hits in the US and top 10 hits in Canada. Third single, Our House, went top 20 in Canada and top 40 in the US. Happy 45th anniversary this month to Steely Dan's fourth album, Katie Lied. It reached number 13 on both the UK Albums Chart and the Billboard 200, and produced the US Top 40 single Black Friday and the fan favorite song Bad Sneakers. 
The album contains some of the earliest recording credits of vocalist Michael McDonald, guitarist Larry Carlton, and drummer Jeff Porcaro, who would go on to co-found the rock band Toto two years later. Rick Derringer and Michael Omartian also contribute instrumentals to the album. March of 1975 also saw the release of Alice Cooper's solo debut album, Welcome to My Nightmare. His only album for the Atlantic label, it peaked at number 5 on the Billboard 200 during its 37-week chart run, eventually being certified platinum. It also reached number 5 in Australia and number 2 in Canada. Lead-off single, Only Women Bleed, topped the Canadian singles chart and reached number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100. Subsequent singles, Department of Youth and the title track, peaked outside the top 40. Cooper was joined on this album by several members of Lou Reed's backing band, and actor Vincent Price recited a spoken word passage on the track Devil's Food. The album cover, by noted movie poster artist Drew Struzan, was ranked 90th in Rolling Stone's list of the greatest album covers of all time. Four decades ago this month, Air Supply released their fifth album, Lost in Love. Thanks to a push from executive producer Clive Davis, their first release on the Arista label was their breakthrough hit outside their native Australia, reaching number 22 on the Billboard 200 chart and going double platinum in the US. All three singles, the title track, All Out of Love, and Every Woman in the World, peaked in the top five of the Billboard Hot 100 and the Canadian singles chart. With this album, the band would become one of the most successful of the 80s, racking up three platinum-selling albums and ten hit singles, all but two of which peaked inside the top ten. Also released in March of 1980 was Journey's sixth album, Departure. It was their first to break the top ten of the Billboard 200, peaking at number eight. Within two months it had gone gold, and another two months later it went platinum. Its lead-off single, Any Way You Want It, was the second of their career to peak inside the top 40 of the Billboard Hot 100, reaching number 25. Follow-up single, Walks Like a Lady, was a top 40 hit in both the U.S. and Canada. It was their last album recorded with founding member Greg Rowley before his departure from the band. In March of 1985, Howard Jones released his sophomore album, Dream Into Action. It reached number 10 on the U.S. and Canadian albums charts, going platinum in both countries, and peaked at number 2 in the U.K. and number 1 in Sweden. Its first three singles, Like to Get to Know You Well, Things Can Only Get Better, and Look Mama, were all top 10 hits in the U.K. and Ireland, and top 20 hits in Australia, Sweden, and Italy, with Things Can Only Get Better peaking in the top 5 in the U.S. Further singles, Life in One Day and No One is to Blame, went top 20 in the UK and the US. Also celebrating its 35th anniversary this month is the self-titled debut album by supergroup The Power Station, consisting of Andy Taylor and John Taylor of Duran Duran, Tony Thompson of Chic, and vocalist Robert Palmer. It reached number 6 on the Billboard 200 and number 12 on the UK albums chart. First single, Some Like It Hot, was a top 10 hit in the US, Canada, Australia, Belgium, and the Netherlands, and peaked at number 14 in the UK. Follow-up single, Get It On, Bang A Gong, also reached the top 10 in the US and Australia, and the top 20 in Canada. The album's original concept would have had a different vocalist for each song, potentially including Mick Jagger, Billy Idol, and Mick Ronson. In March of 1990, Sinead O'Connor released her sophomore album, I Do Not Want What I Haven't Got. It topped the album's charts in 15 countries, including the US, where it stayed for six consecutive weeks, the UK, Ireland, Canada, and Australia, and holds multi-platinum certifications in Canada, the UK, and the US. The single, Nothing Compares to You, written by Prince, was equally successful, topping the charts in more than a dozen countries and ending up on Greatest Songs of All Time lists by Rolling Stone, Billboard, and others, as well as receiving Grammy nominations for Record of the Year and Best Female Pop Vocal Performance. Follow-up single, The Emperor's New Clothes, also reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and was a top 10 hit in Ireland and Italy, and a top 20 hit in Australia and Switzerland. Also released 30 years ago this month was the soundtrack from the romantic comedy film Pretty Woman. It peaked at number four on the Billboard 200 during a chart run of 91 weeks. It was certified triple platinum in the US, double platinum in the UK, and five times platinum in Canada. In addition to featuring the 1964 Roy Orbison classic, Oh Pretty Woman, which was essentially the title track, and songs by Robert Palmer, Natalie Cole, and David Bowie, the soundtrack spawned three singles. Show Me Your Soul by the Red Hot Chili Peppers reached number 10 on the Billboard Modern Rock Tracks chart. Go West's King of Wishful Thinking was a top 10 hit on the Billboard Hot 100, as well as the Australian and Canadian singles charts. But the biggest hit was Roxette's It Must Have Been Love, which hit number one in nine countries, including the US, Poland, Spain, and the top ten in ten others. A quarter of a century ago, Tupac released his third album, Me Against the World. With this album, not only did Tupac become the first artist to have a number one album while serving a prison sentence, in this case for sexual assault, Me Against the World was the first album to hit number one on both the Billboard 200 and the Billboard R&B Hip Hop Albums charts.
It held the number one spot on the Billboard 200 for four weeks and was certified double platinum by the end of the year. The album's first single, Dear Mama, made the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100 and reached number one on the Billboard Rap Singles chart. Follow-up singles, So Many Tears and Temptations didn't break the Hot 100 Top 40, but both went Top 20 on the Rap Singles chart. The album received a Grammy nomination for Best Rap Album. March of 1995 also saw the release of Relish, the debut album by Joan Osborne. It was a Top 10 album in six countries, including the US, the UK, and the Netherlands. It went triple platinum in the US on the strength of its lead-off single, One of Us, which climbed to number four on the Billboard Hot 100 and topped the singles charts in Australia, Canada, Sweden, and Belgium. It was a top 10 single in 10 other countries and was nominated for three Grammy Awards, Best Female Pop Vocal Performance, Record of the Year, and Song of the Year. St. Teresa and Spiderweb were both nominated for Best Female Rock Vocal Performance in consecutive Grammy years, and the album was nominated for Album of the Year. March of 2000 saw the release of Disturbed's debut album, The Sickness. Despite peaking no higher than number 29 on the Billboard 200, it stayed on the chart for over two years and became the band's most successful album, earning five times platinum certification. Lead single Stupefy reached number 12 on the Billboard Mainstream Rock Tracks chart and number 10 on the Billboard Alternative Songs chart, but follow-up single Down With The Sickness was more successful, climbing to number 5 and number 8 respectively on the same charts. Voices reached the top 20 of both charts. Several songs from the album have been featured in films and video games such as Dragon Ball Z, Guitar Hero, and South Park. Also celebrating its 20th anniversary this month is NSYNC's sophomore album No Strings Attached. It spent its first eight weeks on the Billboard 200 chart at number one and was the best-selling album of its year, selling 2.4 million copies just in its first week, a record which stood for 15 years. Within a month, it was certified nine times platinum. It also topped the Canadian and Malaysian albums charts and was a top 10 album in Australia, the Netherlands, Switzerland, and Belgium. Its first single, Bye Bye Bye, hit number one in Australia, Canada, and New Zealand and reached the top five of the Billboard Hot 100. Its follow-up single, It's Gonna Be Me, topped the Hot 100 as well as the Canadian singles chart. Both singles were top 10 hits in the UK. Third single, This I Promise You, was a top 10 hit in the US and Canada. The album title was a reference to the group cutting ties with former manager Lou Pearlman after their lawsuit against him for fraud was settled out of court. Fifteen years ago this month, Al Green released his 28th album, Everything's Okay. In its seven-week run on the Billboard 200, it reached number 50, his first album to chart that high in 30 years. It spent 12 weeks on the Billboard R&B albums chart, peaking at number 19. Joined by longtime producer Willie Mitchell, as well as veteran musicians such as guitarist Charles Skip Pitts and bassist Leroy Hodges, the album includes Be My Baby, my favorite on the album, the single Perfect to Me, and his rendition of the Billy Preston classic You Are So Beautiful, which was previously covered by Joe Cocker and Kenny Rogers. Also released in March of 2005 was Brendan Benson's third album, The Alternative to Love. Released shortly before he joined Jack White to form the Tours, the album reached an unjustifiably low peak of number 48 on the Billboard 200. The single Spit It Out reached number 75 on the UK singles chart, Cold Hands Warm Heart gained exposure in TV shows such as Bones and Smallville, and What I'm Looking For was featured in the film Ghost Town. This is a fantastic album. Check it out, if, especially if you love the Raconteurs. Uh, this, I mean, e and even if you don't, it's just just a great pop album. All three of those songs that I just mentioned are, are ones that I absolutely love. Check out this album. March of 2010 saw the release of Justin Bieber's full-length debut album, My World 2.0. Out of its 125 weeks on the Billboard 200, it spent three of its first four weeks at number one, making Bieber the youngest male solo artist to top that chart since Stevie Wonder in 1963. It was also a number one album in Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, Spain, Brazil, and his native Canada, and was a top 10 album in 15 other countries. Lead-off single, Baby, featuring Ludacris, topped the singles charts in France and Scotland, and was a top five single in the US, Japan, the UK, and Canada, and reached the top 10 in eight other countries. Subsequent singles, Eeny Meeny, featuring Sean Kingston, and Somebody to Love, were top 20 singles in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the U.S., with Eeny Meeny going top 10 in the U.K. and Somebody to Love reaching the top 10 in Canada. The album was nominated for a Grammy for Best Pop Vocal Album. Also released 10 years ago this month was Gorilla's third album, Plastic Beach. It topped the album's charts in Australia and Denmark, peaked at number 2 in the U.S. and the U.K., and was a top 5 album in 11 other countries. 
two singles from the album, Stylo and Rhinestone Eyes, placed in the top 40 of the Billboard Alternative Songs chart, while Superfast Jellyfish went top 40 on the UK Dance Songs chart. The album appeared on numerous year-end lists of best albums, including Slant, Q, Filter, Consequence of Sound, and Village Voice. Some of the guest artists who appear on the album include Bobby Womack, Snoop Dogg, Lou Reed, De La Soul, and Mick Jones. Five years ago this month, Kendrick Lamar released his third album, To Pimp a Butterfly. It topped the album's charts in the US, the UK, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, and was a top ten album in nine other countries. It was ranked at number one on numerous music publications' year-end lists, including Rolling Stone, Billboard, Consequence of Sound, Spin, and Pitchfork. It earned 11 Grammy nominations, a single-year record for a hip-hop artist, including Album of the Year, and winning Best Rap Album. Single All Right won Best Rap Performance and Best Rap Song at the 2016 Grammys, and Single I won the same two awards the previous year. All Right was also nominated for Song of the Year. The album boasts guest appearances by a multitude of artists including George Clinton, Thundercat, Pharrell Williams, Kamasi Washington, Snoop Dogg, Ronald Isley, SZA, and Dr. Dre. Also in March of 2015, Courtney Barnett released her debut album, Sometimes I Sit and Think, and Sometimes I Just Sit. It peaked at number 20 on the Billboard 200, but topped five other Billboard charts, including the Rock, Folk, and Alternative Albums charts. It received eight nominations at the ARIA Awards, the Australian Grammys, including Album of the Year and Best Rock Album, and won three, Best Independent Release, Breakthrough Artist, and Best Female Artist. Courtney Barnett was also nominated for a Grammy for Best New Artist. Several publications, including Stereo Gum, Pitchfork, and The AV Club, ranked it in their top 10 albums of the year. Okay, let's take a look at these Spotlight albums. Wow, I've still got my voice pretty much. I, my voice is usually shot by this point in the recording. Uh, yeah, so the recording went a lot more smoothly today than it usually does for backtracks for some reason. So I'll, I'll take that as a good omen. But uh, yeah, anyway, I have two Spotlight albums for you today, and uh, both of them were actually released in March of 1985, so they are 35 years old this month assuming my math is working correctly. Uh, and another thing that these two albums both have in common is uh, something that's atypical for most Spotlight albums that I choose, is uh, these are not my first full album uh, dips into each of, either of these artists. You know, most of them I choose specifically for the reason that, you know, I've never really experienced that artist before. But these were, well, these were relatively easy to come by. Let's just... Uh, that was probably the cheap the, the chief reason why I picked them up, and they were both pretty inexpensive too. So, uh, but anyway, on to the albums themselves. The first one is uh, this artist's ninth album. It is Eric Clapton. Uh, Behind the Sun is this album, and uh, it's it's a pretty good album. Although it's you know, in the grand scheme of Eric Clapton, the, the consensus of most music aficionados is the '80s are not the decade to look for to look to for uh, really good Clapton stuff. But Hey, I enjoyed it, and one of the things that brought me to this album was the fact that it's produced by Phil Collins, which, which is yes, a strange choice for an Eric Clapton album to be produced by Phil Collins, but, but still, it's got some good songs on here. I, I enjoy uh, pretty much all the songs. Steve Lukather and Jeff Porcaro appear on this album, uh, and as does Lindsey Buckingham. He appears on one track, uh, "Something's Happening." which is a good song. I mean, there really aren't any bad songs on here. Uh, Same Old Blues is on side one, and that is a standout in a good way. It is one of the more uh, classic full-on blues songs. It doesn't have nearly the keyboards or synths that pretty much every other song on this album has, which kind of brings it, you know, brings it down. It's, you know, you know, but but still, an Eric, even a bad Eric Clapton album is a pretty good album, honestly. Uh, unless there's one anybody out there knows that's really, really crappy, which I doubt that Clapton would have put out crap. Uh, he's not Crapton after all. He's Clapton. Let's put it that way. What are songs? No song. Well, the one song that really stands out for me is uh, Forever Man. And that's only because it was in a movie that I enjoyed when I was a kid. And that was the first the first place that I heard that song. And also there were a couple of other songs that were recorded for this album, but didn't show up on it, that were recorded for movies. Um, a song that appeared in the Back to the Future soundtrack. Uh, it was actually put on the Back to the Future soundtrack album, but it was recorded during these sessions. Oh, Heaven is One Step Away. That's the name of the song. I knew it would come to me. I know Back to the Future like the back of my hand, but anyway. Oh yeah, still a good song. And uh, oh, one of the highlights of this album is he covers uh, the song Knock on Wood, which is uh, Eddie Floyd, I believe. Uh, the Eddie Floyd song. Great, uh, great song. Great rendition. I mean, I could somebody would have to really louse up that song for me to not enjoy it. But yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good album. I'm, I'm glad I picked it up. It was five bucks, so no huge loss. 
uh, and yeah, and I had not uh, experienced the album before except for that one song, some um, Forever Man, so which is a good song, and yeah, yeah, so uh, not a terrific album, but not a bad album, I have to say. Uh, so yeah, that's not a lengthy review, I guess, but uh, hopefully it will suffice for you folks out there. Uh, and the next album in my list, which was also, as I said, released in uh, March of 1985, was Kenny Loggins' fifth album, Vox Humana. And I assume I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, good album, and one of the things that uh, attracted me to it, uh, not just because it was easy to find, was uh, a few guest artists on here. Uh, the Pointer Sisters, Philip Bailey, and DeBarge. Several members of DeBarge appear on this album. DeBarge was an R&B group in the 80s. It was popular in the 80s. So, but yeah. Very good album, and uh, what is what was actually uh, this album, as well as Behind the Sun Have in Common, uh, side one was filled mostly with upbeat songs, and side two was mostly uh, slower songs and ballads. So, But uh, yeah, I gotta say, no, Lo no Looking Back was one of the uh, big singles off this album, and that was a really good song. But yeah, uh, Kenny Loggins is just, you know, I just like his stuff more often than not. It's just, you know, upbeat, bouncy, and his voice just kind of exudes good stuff. How's that for being eloquent? But anyway, yeah, good album. Uh, I liked it. I think I probably like this one a little bit more than uh, Eric Clapton's album, just because this one's a little bit more characteristic of Kenny Loggins' style. And I mean, it, the 80s was prime Loggins, whereas the 80s was not necessarily prime Clapton. So, but yeah, um, both good albums. Uh, I recommend checking them out, honestly. Uh, not the best Backtracks Spotlight albums that I've ever picked up, but uh, not trash either. So, hey, yeah. So yeah, give them both a try. Eric Clapton, Behind the Sun, and Vox Humana by Kenny Loggins. Wonderful, well, good albums. Yes, my brain is a little bit fried, as it usually tends to be by the end of filming Backtracks. But anyway, um, that will do it for Backtracks for March of 2020. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.